Hello and good morning or afternoon whenever you're watching this. It's Saturday, December 11th at the time of this recording. Um, it's the afternoon. I'm about to get to work, but I thought I would do a, a reading today since I didn't do one yesterday. I took the day off. Um, I wasn't planning on it. I just didn't really feel like doing it. Um, the time just didn't feel um, right. It was, I needed to sort of regenerate a little bit and even still today I am and I'm about to, like I said, get into some work um, and do some practical mundane day things, you know, like make a living. And uh, I'm burning this yellow candle <clears throat> because yellow uh, represents new ideas and, and clarity, logic, things like that, and focus. Um, what else? It's good for mental blocks. Um, I've been feeling like there's a lot of this happened a lot recently where it feels like there's like a lot of heightened energy um, every few days or so or there's like sort of quick impulses or cycles of high intensity energy oh gosh I should really stop moving this around because of this candle I don't want the candle to fall over um, so that's why I chose focus today. Something to help with a little bit of grounding, but also just like keeping our mind state in the right state. If anyone's been struggling with self-talk these days, um, there would be a reason for that. If you haven't noticed your self-talk, then there's uh, maybe uh, some energy here to call in to listen what's going on inside. Um, another message I've been getting recently is about things that we know. Um, do we know what we know? So there's a bit of a line of questioning, an energy for questioning right now. which is, again, contemplating and ideas and logic. Do we know what we know? What do we know to be true for ourselves? Is it really true? Is it still true? Um, in that way, there's a call to be a little bit more open about the things that you know. Um, open, adventurous, there's that, that Sag energy again still sort of like hanging around since the eclipse. <clears throat> and Neptune retrograde being over, so like it's sort of dreamy, openness, might feel foggy in the head, but it's all good. We'll just try to work on tracking our thoughts, meditation is good seeing where the mind goes and following it where it goes, but don't do anything about it just yet. Just notice. Okay. Chop wood to the sea, not for you. These all came out in the reverse. And to the sea and not for you follow in sequence. They're number seven and six. So going backwards. Interesting. So it's possible that some people might feel like if you feel disconnected from some kind of source, like unsure how to move forward, not sure where to get your inspiration from. Uh, it's because there's you've been there's been a little bit of distraction. Chop wood. Too much focus on the physical. Something has just something that you thought was um, to be expected, 
that was coming your way, some kind of windfall did not occur. And that's maybe left you feeling a little bit confused. Like what I thought that was, you were playing the game and you thought that you were playing it in such a way that you would get what you want. So mm, there's a new direction to head in for sure here. Someone might be feeling very confused. Page of Wands underneath. That's been happening a lot. Wheel of Fortune, Four of Wands, I mean, uh, Four of Cups. Yeah, so instead of uh, moving on to the next thing, the next, uh, sevens are all about sort of like learning higher wisdom. Oh, I love that the yellow candle is burning for this. Number, numerology number seven. And it's in the reverse, so it's almost like something didn't happen for you, but instead of learning this lesson and moving on, you're sort of waiting around to, You believe in it so much that you feel like that this is gonna come back around and you're gonna just deny anything, any any new opportunity that comes your way, you're sort of just holding out. That's why the busy making is here, the, the making busy. Mm -hmm. A little bit of battling your own intuition or not not totally trusting your intuition. Why is that? I don't like sounds of burning. Okay, it's all safe. It's all good. Uh, we have the Nine of Wands, Temperance, Strength, and New Moon. If you are holding on to something, I do see that you are, you will eventually move past it because there's the new moon here, a new cycle, a new intention, or you're going to approach it differently because temperance and strength is here. Strength, strength is compassion for oneself in the face of fear. I still sort of see you um, trying to figure out how it's going to work. I wonder what your hopes and fears are. Temperance is like the alchemy of experimentation. It's patience, understanding that things take time. Strength is having compassion for yourself. Find, finding, um, this is like calling out your fears into the open. Um, into your sort of loving awareness. That, that's what causes this new start here. It's almost like this new, this new thing doesn't want to begin. This new cycle won't begin until something is said out loud. Some kind of secret, some kind of secret needs to be spoken. You're waiting, you're waiting for something to come out into the open. The high priestess, strength, and the knight of nine, nine of wands. In the meantime, it's nice to see that you're trying different things. This is Sagittarius, by the way, being open to new things. It 
So there may be resistance, but I don't see it necessarily as resistance, just that this other thing needs to close out somehow. Yeah, you're trying to you're trying to get a new perspective right now on the whole situation. Um, the situation comes out as <clears throat> the sun, which is very hopeful. Uh, maybe the maybe there's just just enough good things happening in your life that you're able to actually come around and deal with this, whatever it is. This, the the strength and the sun, both Leo energy. So maybe in your heart, you've, you've been doing some heart healing or some heart chakra um, opening, and that's actually made you stronger. And then we have the Five of Wands and the King of Swords. So it looks like you've been doing things that feel good to you in the moment. That's what's actually allowing you to have this new start, this being this open, speaking your fears. Although it's weird that you're still sort of waiting for this other thing. I see the Four of Cups. Waiting for the right offer. I mean, that is a way of, that's like another way of keeping your options open, waiting for the right offer until something feels right intuitively, until, until something turns it, until something is an intuitive hit for you, you know that most things are not for you. You're gonna be, I think, extra discerning in that the Knight of Swords is here. Oh my God, I keep saying Knights, 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 Knights. King of Swords. Interesting. There are no Knights on the table for the record, but I keep saying Knight like for nine and Knight for the King. And Knight is, Knights are just mean movement. So I believe that there's there is something moving here. You're moving. You're going to be moving your body, moving somewhere. Energetic movement. These are the last two cards. So you're like your hopes and fears are this, this five of wands. Uh, people might disagree with you. But the king of swords is telling me that you, you're kind of sticking to your truth here. You're not burying it anymore. Yeah. You can see the whole picture, the bigger picture. Which is why which is why you're keeping your options open. It's why you are trying new things. This this is Oh no, my music just died. It's okay. Um, it's why you're able to um, easily pass on opportunities and have this sort of patience because you know what's for you and what's not for you. Where do my books go? Ah, yes, yes. I'm gonna read some of these oracle cards because I like their messages sometimes. Not sometimes, all the time, usually. All right, 42, chop wood. Essential meanings, being grounded in everyday experience. So the protection message, since it's in the reverse of chopped wood. Oh, this is the armchair astronaut again. Do you dream of wealth and fame, big ideas, inventions, or desires with a capital D? The appearance of this card is a sign that you might be devoting far too much time to dreaming and talking about your dreams. You have to get out of the chair to make things happen. You actually have to do something. Start with a small task. Remember, the big dream becomes reality only after you have begun to take incremental steps. Take one step towards the gods and they will take ten steps towards you. Right, so, I mean, in some ways this just tells me that if, if you're waiting for something to come to you, um, that's not enough. I think you got to put yourself out there. Try different things. Um, you know, go to events, 
like if this if it's physical career related like go to networking events and go and like go meet people um you don't have to be selling yourself super hard core but just honestly do things that feel good to you that's the first place to start if it doesn't feel right for you then move on and go to the next thing but those are the first steps right there acknowledge that something does feel good to you and and, and take a step in that direction and then you'll you'll have other new new opportunities will sort of unfold before you number 7 to the c being in flow, returning to source, recognizing how pieces fit together, a natural pattern of events. Mm -hmm. So in the reverse, maybe this is like, right, somebody feeling out of flow. When external conditions appear to block every attempt to move forward, there is no hidden message for you to decipher. Like the ocean, the tides of experience ebb and flow. You are in a natural cycle, so know that things will flow again in due course. There is no cause for alarm. Stop resisting and fighting against the situation and learn to flow, even when the tide is going out. Relax and trust in the abundance that will soon be within your reach. An ancient mariner's, ancient mariner's saying applies to you now. When fishermen cannot go to sea, they stay home and repair their nets. Mm -hmm. And finally, not for you, number six. A clear knowing that something is being denied you. Rejection is God's protection. Don't chase after what flies. Don't chase after what flees from you. Don't obsess what eludes you don't bang your head against the wall there is nothing romantic about what is unavailable no prize given for torturing yourself and nothing to be gained by refusing to see the red flags that have been waving since you began your pursuit now is the time to walk away there are other goals other loves other games other successes waiting for you the way out of obsessing is radical acceptance and surrender spirit wants only the best for you this is a sign that you have something much better waiting for you trust uh-huh, uh-huh, something much better waiting for you, Wheel of Fortune, that's all about cycles, Four of Cups, this was the energy I think of the not for you, where you think, you, you think you're waiting for something that, it, that you're destined for, um, but actually it is not for you. This is the challenge of listening to intuition. Right, like deep down you may know if something is for you or not. Sometimes we're willing to wait for it, other times in, in, in persevere. That's been the energy of perseverance. I think now that if you're, if this resonates for you, know that something new is coming, but only after you have some compassion for yourself in this situation. Know that you're not to blame. Um, this, this experience is meant to open you up more to realize what's important to you. Um, I think this is, this is a lot of... Um, here, here's the acceptance. Here's the radical self-acceptance as described from the Not For You card. This is the total surrender. Total surrender. Go towards what makes you happy. Who gives a fuck what other people think? Because <laughs> you know. You know it's true. You can see the truth of the situation. I think this is about sort of getting so much in tune with um, what, val what, what matters to you, what you value, that you no longer question that. And that becomes your truth and you lead with that from now on. And if someone isn't willing to accept your truth for what it is um, or is trying to gaslight you, um, well, that's just bullshit. So something better is coming. There's this new start here. Let's try to get a card or two around that. Show me the new moon. Nine of pentacles.
So once you've done this healing work, remember I mentioned something about the heart chakra healing, the, the opening, there is, there's definitely sort of some, some confidence coming in from this healing. Um, and it's going to make it so that that which you wish to grow for yourself or, or in your environment will grow very easily. It will grow very naturally. You won't even have to, there won't even be a question of like, of, am I going to start this or no? It's not even your choice. I think that this is a cycle that will naturally begin as you heal yourself, as you change your perspective and, and focus on doing the things that really feel good to you. It just happens. It happens automatically. Page of Wands. Judgment. Yes. Oh, we got two sevens that dropped there. Uh, we have Judgment, the Seven of Wands, and Seven of Pentacles. So I just clarified what's underneath the Page of Wands, which is the Seed of Inspiration. It, that card has been coming up a lot in this position for me. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And I don't just mean like me personally, I just mean while I'm doing these readings online. So there is some kind of assessment period. It almost feels like usually the Seven of Wands is can be seen as like a defensive energy, like the need to defend oneself, not like from harm, but just from like this, no, this is what matters to me. So there's like, there's, there's a self-assessment going on. The seed of inspiration is figuring out that your needs matter. There's been some sort of like significant investment here um, or maybe a decision to like start investing into the things that matter to you. That's what's happening underneath. And you know what should matter to you is right now is simply just focusing on what feels good. The sun, the joy. Um, and if something does not feel good to you, you have the king of swords energy to pull from. You can just cut it out. It's ultra discerning. Just um, it's not meant to be negative. Really, what's happening here is you're gaining self confidence, um, you're healing. There, there is a lot of optimism in this reading, uh, but it's it's because you are less and less reliant on the opinions of others, and especially the opinions of what you know, what other other people's influence on your life, as in other people's needs. If you've been balance, putting other people's needs and valuing those more than your own, like if family tries to tell you, oh, you should be doing this kind of work, you should go talk to this person to help you with this problem. It doesn't have to be family, it could be anybody. Especially like manipulation at work as well could, could be a thing. Uh, if someone's wanting you to stay in some sort of position, but you really want to go do another kind of job, or, or you're realizing that a different kind of work is really your jam, then, then focus on, on that feeling of what does it feel like to do better work? What does it feel like to have the life that you want? And take one step towards, towards that. That's what this chop wood is saying. If you're, don't be an armchair astronaut. Go and get that thing. Oh, I love that. That's what I have. Um, I'll do personal readings if you want. If you're still watching this and, and you'd like to just have a session with me and sit down and, and do a little tarot, um, I love this. So uh, you are more than welcome to get in touch with me. Um, I believe the instructions are in the description box below. Thanks for being here and have a good day.